हाय हाय पूजा हाय अभय गुड इवनिंग सर या गुड इवनिंग ओके सो वेलकम टू द फेज टू सो लेट मी फर्स्ट इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ आई एक्चुअली माई नेम इज सुबोदीप एंड आई एम डूइंग पी एच डी इन थियोरिटिकल केमिस्ट्री एट आई आई टी कानपुर एंड दिस इज माई थर्ड इयर गोइंग सो इन दिस लेक्चर एक्चुअली वी विल बी सॉल्विंग मेनली द प्रीवियस इयर गेट क्वेश्चन्स बट देर आर not too many questions left so if you wish or if you want we can discuss any specific or any particular topic of your choice so just let me know uh, if you have any particular topic then from the next week on we can discuss okay hi hi shikha hello good evening sir yeah good evening sir yep i emailed him last week okay so regarding the recording uh, right yes sir yes sir so the recording of the lecture series is not available yet so not available okay so i will just check with the nptel coordinator and we'll let you know okay okay sir actually i have uploaded all the all my recording uh, in the nptel site so So your YouTube channel is available? Yeah, yeah, my YouTube channel is available. And there you have updated. I have updated, but uh, the all the lectures are not public, so that's why you probably will not able to see that. So I will public all the lectures, then you can access from my YouTube channel directly. Or let's send link also, no? Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. you. Of your YouTube channel also. Okay, okay. I'll share the link. Okay, so uh, today uh, actually we'll be solving mainly three or four questions, three questions from two thousand fourteen and two thousand sixteen paper. Okay, so let's just start. Let's start. Okay, let me just share my screen, and then you can start. so is my screen visible to you hello anyone yes, yes sir okay thanks okay so uh, let's start so this is uh, question number 11 from 2016 paper and uh, the question says for an elementary bimolecular gas phase reaction the activation energy is given which is 5.5 kJ mol inverse and we have to find out the enthalpy of activation in kJ mol inverse unit at 300 kelvin the value of r which is the universal gas constant is also given okay so uh, here in this question uh, the reaction is actually bimolecular gas phase reaction so we have to remember that it is bimolecular reaction means the two reactant molecules is reacting or uh, colliding to form activated complex then from the activated complex the product will form so that means let's say this type of reaction from a plus b to c or from 2a to c like this now here uh, activation energy now uh, from the 
केमिकल काइनेटिक्स और ट्रांजिशन स्टेट थ्योरी फ्रॉम ट्रांजिशन स्टेट थ्योरी we know the uh, we can compute the rate constant for any particular reaction using the eiring equation right so the eiring equation says let's say from for a typical reaction a to p where a is the reactant and p is the product for this type of reaction let's say uh, an active first an activated complex will form right from a to let's say activated complex a dagger this is activated complex so this is the approximation or assumption of transition state theory so before any product molecule will form there uh, the first the reactant molecules will combine or will react together to form an uh, highly activated complex highly energized activated complex and then from the activated complex the product will form so from this activated complex the further the product molecule will form okay now uh, so the first approximation of tran transition state theory is that there is an p equilibrium or equilibrium between the activated complex and the reactant molecules okay so there is an equilibrium between activated complex and reactant molecules so this is the first approximation of transition state theory so that means from a to a dagger a double dagger so this step is an equilibrium step or p pre equilibrium step and from this step let's say this is k2 and the equilibrium constant for this step let's say k double dagger okay now the from eiring equation the overall rate constant will be overall rate constant let's say k k is the rate constant for the overall reaction so k equal to kbt divided by h so this is a factor so kb here is the boltzmann constant t is the absolute temperature and h is the planck constant times the equilibrium constant between the reactant molecules and the activated complex k double dagger so let's write it down kb equal to boltzmann constant h equal to planck constant which is the particular value in si unit the value of planck constant is 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule second and k da double dagger is the equilibrium constant between the activated complex and the reactant molecules now let's take log logarithm of both side so ln k will be ln kb divided by h plus ln t plus ln k double dagger right now let's take the derivative both side with respect to temperature so it will be d ln k by del t so this is actually constant term independent of temperature so uh, while we taking derivative with respect to temperature so this term will give us zero then ln t so then we one upon t plus del ln k double dagger divided by del t right so del ln k by del t 
equal to 1 upon t plus now this k double dagger this k double dagger is an equilibrium constant so remember that equilibrium constant between activated complex and reactant molecules so from thermodynamics we know that any for any equilibrium constant if we take the derivative del ln k equilibrium with respect to temperature we will get delta u by r t square okay from thermodynamics we know this relation where delta u is the internal energy change this is actually internal energy change so similarly in this case the k double dagger is the equilibrium constant here so if we take the derivative del ln k double dagger by del t will give us delta u double dagger divided by r t square right now delta u double dagger is the change of internal energy between activated complex and the reactant molecules activated complex let's see ac and the reactant molecules let's say rm so this is actually one particular uh, equation then there is an empirical equation we know previously which is arrhenius equation right arrhenius equation now according to the arrhenius equation we rate constant for the overall reaction will be k equal to just a prefactor a times e to the power minus e a divided by r t okay so here e a is the activation energy so if you just draw a picture like this this is energy this is reaction coordinate reaction coordinate mean along which the reaction is happening so this is let's say reactant molecule let's say this is product molecule like this so this height of energy is known as activation energy ea that means the reactant molecule has to access this energy this amount of energy minimum this amount of energy to form the product molecules right so this is the arrhenius equation now if you take logarithm of both sides here ln k equal to ln a minus ea divided by rt right now let's take the derivative with respect to temperature similarly so del ln k by del t this term is temperature independent which is zero so then e a divided by r t square right now this is actually equation one let's say this is equation two let's say so from equation one and two if you compare this so the left side is d del ln k by del t here it is also del ln k by del t so if you compare this two term so e a by r t square will be equal to 1 upon t plus del u dagger divided by r t square right so just comparing equation to 1 and 2 
ई ए बाई आर टी स्क्वायर इक्वल टू वन अपन टी प्लस डेल्यू डबल डेगर डिवाइडेड बाई आर टी स्क्वायर सो हियर फ्रॉम दिस इक्वेशन यू कैन गेट द रिलेशन और यूजफुल रिलेशन ई ए इक्वल टू डेल्टा यू डबल डेगर प्लस आर टी ओके so this is the relationship between the activation energy which is ea and delta u dagger which is the change of internal energy between the reactant molecules and the activated complex and plus rt now we know from the thermodynamics that in this question it is asked to find out the value of enthalpy of activation that means delta h double dagger so from thermodynamics we know that the h equal to u plus pv right now for a, any change of reaction for a, for any particular reaction where the changes is happening so that means the delta h will be delta u plus p delta v let's say at constant temp temperature and constant pressure at constant temperature and pressure so in this case uh, from reactant to activation activated complex step so we can write down delta h double dagger which is the enthalpy of activation that means the change of enthalpy between the activated complex and the reactant molecules equal to delta u double dagger plus p delta v now we also know that for just uh, pv equal to n rt right for ideal gas so P delta V we can write out as the delta N R T. So if you just put this value here, it will be delta U double dagger plus delta N R T. So delta N we can write out double dagger here. Delta N is the the, the number of num the change of number of reactant molecules. Let's say from a plus b to activated complex ab double dagger let's say for this step now re here reactant molecules are a and b right so there are two reactant molecule let's say and activated complex is a ab double dagger that means there is just one complex here so from two reactant molecules one complicated uh, complex is forming so here we can say delta n double dagger that means change of number of reactant molecule number of molecules will be 1 minus 2 which is minus 1 like this okay so we get the relation here delta h double dagger equal to delta u double dagger plus delta n at p so let's put this value here so E A equal to delta U double dagger means delta H double dagger minus delta N double dagger R T plus R T right. So the overall reaction uh, overall form the, of the equation will be just minus delta N double dagger minus one. So this is the overall equation between the overall relation between the activation energy which is Ea and the uh, enthalpy of activation which is delta H double dagger. Now this equation is very useful you can just uh, note it down. Now uh, it, in this question it is asked or it is said that for a bimolecular reaction right for a bi molecular reaction so bimolecular reaction means the re first initially there are two reactant molecules so two type of reactant molecule let's say so this type of reaction a plus b two let's say p or you can say two a two p like this now for a bimolecular reaction so two reactant initially there are let's say two reactant molecules they are colliding to form an activated complex overall activated complex 
so in this case delta n double dagger that means change of number of molecules will be so activated complex is one one molecule overall one complicated molecule molecular complex minus initially there are two type of reactant molecules so two so delta n double dagger will be minus one for bimolecular reaction so for this type of reaction the equation will be e a equal to delta h double dagger now let's say here delta n double dagger is minus one here so minus one minus one minus two and uh, outside there is one minus so there will be plus two at t so this is the overall relation for a bimolecular reaction now from here we can just delta h double dagger equal to e a minus 2 r t right now let's uh, get back here so e a activation energy is given 5.5 kilojoule mole inverse and temperature is 300 kelvin okay so activation energy is 5.5 kilojoule now if you form if we just transform kilojoule to joule that means we have to multiply with 10 to the power 3 right thousand so 10 to the power 3 joule mole inverse then minus 2 times 8 point uh, the value of r in joule unit 8.314 times joule mole inverse times kelvin inverse then temperature temperature is 300 kelvin so this kelvin and kelvin inverse will cancel and the unit will be joule mole inverse so 5.5 .5 into 10 to the power 3 minus 2 times 8.314 times 300 joule mole inverse so it will be approximately 5, 1, 2, okay, so let me just check it, 5.5 times 1000, so it will be just minus. Like this joule mole inverse it will be just five one one point six joule mole inverse approximately let's say five one two joule mole inverse now we have to again convert it from joule to kilojoule right so joule to kilojoule means one kilojoule equal to 10 to the power 3 joule so now from joule to kilojoule so we have to just divide with 1000 so if you divide 512 by 1000 so it will be 0 0.512 kilojoule mole inverse right so the answer for this uh, question the change of uh, enthalpy of activation at 300 kelvin for this bimolecular reaction will be 0 0.512 kilojoule mole inverse okay so the main relationship you have to remember this this equation here this is the relationship between the activation energy ea and the enthalpy of activation delta h double dagger delta n double dagger is the change of molecularity you can say so the uh, number of molecules at the activated complex minus number of molecules in the react uh, before reaction happening the number of reactant molecules then r is the universal gas constant T is the absolute temperature. So this is the main reaction. From this reaction, we can get this react this equation for bimolecular reaction, and then for for this equation, we can get uh, 
like del change of enthalpy of activation is 0.512 kilojoule mole inverse. Okay, so any particular question, any doubts from this question? All clear? Anyone? Yes, no. Okay, so that's great. So you have to just remember one that one particular equation and form that equation for any molecular reaction like for unimolecular reaction, bimolecular reaction, trimolecular reaction, for any kind of reaction you can just compute the delta n dagger and from that equation you can get the value of enthalpy of activation. Okay, so now uh, let's just move to the next question. Just a second. Okay, so uh, this is uh, actually question number 12 from 2016 paper and so this question is about the titration of strong acid and strong base. So this is, uh, so the question says the titration of strong acid with a strong base is represented by which of the following plots, okay. So the y axis is actually change of pH with respect to volume and the x axis is volume so you all you all know about uh, titration right you can just unmute yourself and uh, just you can give answer yes, you can just unmute yourself and talk so all of you know about titration right Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what do you think the what would be the answer for this question? This is the titration between the strong acid and a strong base. C. Uh, no, because uh, okay. So let me start from the just from the basics. So, titration in in titration, we generally why do we use uh, titration method? So, titration is a qualitative analysis analyt analytic method so by titration by doing titration we just try try to find out the strength or concentration of of a particular solution let's say for this strong acid we we, we want to find out the concentration of strong acid with strong base now in titration the uh, the concentration of strong base is known we know the concentration of strong base here okay we just so in titration one is tritent so tritent solution means we know the concentration of this solution so the here the concentration the solution is known 
now with the help of this solution we want to find out the concentration of an unknown solution which is the strong acid in this case so it is trident is strong base in this case now another one is tri tend where the concentration is unknown which is the strong acid in this case so in buret we actually fill the strong base or tritrend solution and in pipet we take uh, a particular volume of tritrend solution or strong acid in this case so within we just pour the uh, strong base or tritrend from the above uh, we just add the tritrend solution with the tritrend solution then we use a particular indicator to indicate the, the how much uh, of tritrend solution is needed to uh, completely uh, react with the tritrend solution so from that uh, equivalence point or end point we just find out the volume of the tritrend solution and from the equation uh, v1s1 equal to v2s2 we can get the strength or concentration of our unknown solution so this is the equation to be remembered so actually uh, v1 s1 equal to v2 s2 v1 s1 means let's say v1 equal to volume of the unknown solution okay unknown solution mean tri trend solution so that means tri trend or the strong acid in this case okay now this is the volume of the solution unknown sol or strong acid solution so we take this as in a pipette right so let's say we know this volume let's say we take the 25 ml or 10 ml of this so we know the volume b1 here now s1 is the strength or concentration or concentration of strong acid unknown solution strong acid so we have to find out the s1 here we don't know the strength or concentration of the acid here now v2 is the volume of the known solution of our sample known sample or known solution so strong base in this case which you take in bullet so uh, from the equivalence point or the end point we we can determine the volume of v2 like how much v2 or uh, strong base is needed to react completely with the strong acid right now s2 is the strength or concentration of our known solution or strong base let's in this case strong base so we know we also know the value of s2 here so the strong concentration of the strong base is known so we know the v1 we know v2 we know s2 so we can get the value of s1 which will be the v2 s2 divided by v1 right so from this equation we can get the value of s1 or concentration of strong acid so in this strong acid strong base particular tritation we use the indicator phenolphthalein because uh, this changes color from white or colorless to pink right so in the bullet we take strong base in this case in pipette we take strong acid so we just uh, start to pour the strong base let's say this is strong acid and by pour it let's say this is base so we just pour strong base from the above and here the indicator is also added 
which will be colorless at low pH. Now, if we just uh, add, uh, if we continue adding the base uh, to the acid solution, so the pH of the acid solution will increase, right? So acid solution means low pH at first. Low pH. Now, if we just add base from the above, then the base will react to the acid. Let's say so acid is HCl and the base is let's say NaOH. So if you add if we add the NaOH from the above to the HCl, so it will form the NaCl plus H2, right? So it will neutralize the acid. So if we just keep on adding the base solution at one point, there will be just one drop of acid will react, last drop of acid will react to the base and it will form NaCl. So there will be from for, for further there will be no acid left so at this point so that is the neutralized point or equivalent uh, end point or equivalence point we say so at this point the ph of this solution will be 7 right the neutral ph there will be no acid left so at this ph the phenolphthalein indicator will change its color from colorless to pink so from this change of color we can get an idea of what is the equivalence point or end point so the main point is the main take home message is that so by adding base to the acid solution the ph of the solution will increase then after equivalence point the ph of the solution will increase much so if we just uh, go back to the plot here so first initially option let's say option c so here if you just with volume x axis is volume so with volume after with adding volume, volume strong base to the acid solution here the ph is keeping constant ph is constant right the y axis is constant value of y axis is constant so that means the ph is not changing which is not right because we know that the if you uh, add uh, base to the acid solution the pH of the solution will increase so uh, so this option C will not be correct here now option B let's see here also the y axis is constant that means uh, with adding base the pH is also constant which is not right now option D the pH is decreasing but this is sharp point after that the pH is increasing so there will be no a particular sharp point at the equivalence point because the pH will be gradually changing so now the option E says the first the after adding base the pH is slowly increasing you can see the pH is slowly increasing then at the equivalence point the pH is abruptly constant like at the equivalence point or end point then after then pH is gradually increasing again so this change or abrupt change of pH is uh, is the equivalence point or end point so this is the particular nature of strong acid based titration so here in this case the option A will be the correct answer first the pH will increase gradually from the low pH it will increase gradually then at the equivalence point it will jump from low to high pH then after the equivalence point if we keep on adding the base the pH will increase uh, obviously in, uh, gradually so the nature of uh, tritation plot from for a strong acid strong base tritation is option A okay uh, any doubts from this question it is clear now yes sir okay great yes sir okay great. okay okay thanks now uh, let's move to our next question just a second
ओके सो दिस इज एक्चुअली क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी सिक्स फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन पेपर एंड द क्वेश्चन सेज द बी सी एल थ्री विच इज बोर ऑन टाई क्लोराइड एंड एन एच फोर सी एल विच इज एमोनियम क्लोराइड वेर हीटेड एट वन फोर्टी डिग्री सेंटिग्रेड टेम्परेचर टू गिव कम्पाउंड एक्स विच वेन हीटेड विन ट्रीटेड विथ एन ए बी एच फोर विच इज सोडियम बोरो हाइड्राइड give another compound y uh, we have to find out the compound x and compound y okay so here the reactant mixture is bcl3 and nh4cl ammonium chloride okay so if you just heat uh, the reactant mixture at 140 degree centigrade temperature so you will get the compound x as like this you will get uh, we, we will get a heterocyclic compound unsaturated heterocyclic compound which will look like this b so the we will get this type of heterocyclic compound which is unsaturated that means there is a there is three double bonds here so it is unsaturated you can see so here the there will be charged the minus this is plus minus this is plus this is minus this is plus right so why this double bond is happening because um, in bcl3 this is actually sp2 hybridized that means the 3 cl bcl bond is uh, is at the plane which is 120 degree each ideal angle is 120 degree so there will be an empty pz orbital of boron so there will be empty pz orbital of boron so the nitrogen is also has a lone pair in s3 so uh, the lone pair of nitrogen will give its electron to the empty pz orbital of boron so that's why it is plus and minus and the a double bond between the n and p is formed is formed actually so that's why this is actually unsaturated heterocyclic compound now the sort uh, the formula is actually b3 in 3 h3 cl3 right so b3 in 3 h3 cl3 so option a and option c so the correct answer of uh, x is b3 in 3 h3 and cl3 h3 cl3 now option a and option c has correct x now we have to find out the y here so why we just add na bh4 which is sodium borohydride it is a uh, reducing agent okay reducing agent so it can donate actually h minus or hydride ion so h minus an extra electron right so it can reduce uh, so that's why the nabh4 is reducing agent so after adding nabh4 the h minus will reduce this compound and will uh, reduce means it, it will it will just h minus will attack here and the cl will be reduced the bcl bond will be reduced by bh bond okay so after adding x to nabh4 the compound will be like this b n
ओके सो बी सी एल बॉन्ड विल बी रिड्यूस्ड बाई बी एच बॉन्ड आफ्टर एडिंग एन ए बी एच वन सो दस फॉर्मूला विल बी वाई विल बी बी थ्री एन थ्री एच सिक्स ओके नाउ दिस इज कॉल्ड बोराजीन विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड द इनऑर्गेनिक बेंजिन बिकॉज इट हैज सिमिलरिटी विथ द बेंजिन राइट सो इफ यू जस्ट ड्रॉ द बेंजिन मॉलिकूल हियर सो बेंजिन मॉलिकूल हैज ऑल सिक्स कार्बन एटम्स थ्री डी लोकलाइज बॉन्ड पाई बॉन्ड दिस पाई बॉन्ड विल एक्चुअली कैन डी लोकलाइज हियर सो यू विल गेट ए रेजोन इन स्ट्रक्चर लाइक दिस दिस थ्री पाई बॉन्ड्स और सिक्स पाई इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विल बी डी लोकलाइज ऑन सिक्स कार्बन आइटम्स सो दिस इज बेंजिन सो देर इज अ सिमिलरिटी बिटवीन द बेंजिन एंड बोडाजिन सो दिस हैज द सिक्स एटम्स रिंग एटम्स बस थ्री ऑफ दिस इज बोरॉन एंड थ्री ऑफ विच इज नाइट्रोजन इन बोडाजिन नाउ इन बेंजिन ऑल आर सिक्स कार्बन आइटम्स सो देर इन द polarity polarity difference between the carbon and dipole uh, the electronegativity between the carbon atoms will be similar so there will be the dipole moment of benzene is zero but there is a polarity uh, pol uh, polarity difference here because boron is minor nitrogen is plus so there there is an also an electronegativity difference between the boron and nitrogen so that's why the bn bond is polar so boracin is reactive compared to the benzene okay but in boracin also these three pi bonds are localized they cannot delocalize so this is uh, another difference between the benzene and boracin okay so the y will be b3 n3 h6 so h x is b3 n3 h3 and cl3 and y is b3 n3 and h6 so that means the option a will be the correct answer in this case okay so this is actually pretty straightforward i think everything is clear okay so another just think just a second So regarding the uh, the previous question, the previous to previous question, the titration question. So here uh, this is a typical uh, cartoon picture of uh, like different acid base titration. Strong acid, first one is strong acid, strong base. The second one is like weak acid, strong base. Third one is strong acid, weak base, and the fourth one is weak acid, weak base. Now uh, there is uh, two main indicator here like one is methyl orange and one is phenylophthalene so we can, that can be used as an indicator in the acid base titration so you can see first plot the strong acid strong base plot the at the equivalence point which is the straight line this this plot so at the equivalence point the ph is changing from 3 to 11 or 3 to 10 you can say so both the indicator phenylalanine and methyl orange can actually capture this change of ph so in the strong acid strong base case both the indicator can be used as an uh, indication or completion of titration so in strong acid strong base methyl orange and phenylalanine can be used but in the weak acid strong base case you can see that the ph is changing at the equivalence point from actually 6 to 10 around 6 to 10 so the methyl orange actually cannot predi cannot capture this change because the the range of ph for methyl orange to work is actually around 3 to 5 so here the ph at the equivalence point ph is changing from around 6 to 10 so that's why the methyl orange cannot be used 
uh, in this case weak acid strong base case so weak acid strong base case the phenolphthalein gen is generally used similarly the strong acid weak base case you can see the uh, change of ph is happening around 3 to 3 to 8 now which is uh, outside of the range of phenolphthalein so that's why in this case the methyl orange is generally used now in the weak acid weak base case you can uh, surprisingly see that like here the ph change is range of ph change at the equivalence point is very low like it is happening around 6 to 7 okay now which is outside of both the range of ph for the phenolphthalein and methyl orange indicator you can see from this plot so weak acid weak base case both the indicator cannot be used so we have to think of different indicators so methyl orange and phenolphthalein cannot be used for the weak acid weak base titration okay so this is this plot is actually guide guide guidance plot okay okay so that's it i think i have uh, three questions for today so next week we'll be solving more questions or more doubts any any doubts from this session you can ask sir range yeah. of ph for phenol methylene is uh, okay let me just share again so the range of ph for which the phenolphthalein indicator will change color is actually you can see from see from the pink color right the pink color is uh, is uh, so 10 from 10 to around 8 so around 8 to 10 ph the pink color is uh, showing right you can okay, sir. so that's why so that that is the range for the phenolphthalein indicator to change its color around 8 to 10 and for methyl orange you can see from around 3 or 2.5 to 5.5 like this so around this range the methyl orange will change its color from colorless to orange okay so any particular doubts any other Sir, any other uh, uh, indicator mm -hmm. if you use then how can you how can we calculate that uh, uh, that graph will be different or in a graph in, okay let me just see it again actually any other indicator we can use but the graph is actually the red plot in four the red uh, the red solid line in four plots are the Tritation plot for different acid and different base solution. Okay, uh, the strong acid, strong base, weak acid, strong base, strong acid, weak base, and weak acid, weak base. This red tag, red solid line, is the is the plot because it it it, it, it will be the same. But the indicator, the range of pH at the equivalence point. That uh, if you notice the strong acid, strong base case at the equivalence point pH is changing from 2.5 to 11 around 10 right so if any indicator has this particular range of pH for its color change then we can use this indicator so that particular indicator will actually capture this pH change right so that is the main point so if the range of pH for any indicator falls in the range of pH uh, in the in the in the range at which the pH is changing at the equivalence point then we can use that particular indicator but if uh, the range of pH is not falling uh, at the at, at the change of pH uh, at the equivalence point then we cannot use that particular indicator so that is the main point so from like from the from this plot weak acid weak base plot this is the fourth plot you can see that the red solid line is the main plot the titration plot you you are just uh, adding the base from above to the acid solution and the ph is changing 
so this is the main plot this plot will not change now if you just look at the equivalence point like there is the solid black line at the equivalence point the change of pH is very small right like it is around 6 to 7 so this is the change of pH is happening at the equivalence point change of pH now to capture this change we have to use a particular indicator whose range of pH of color change range of pH for color change falls in this region falls in this region right that will be the main point main motivation so we have to capture this change we have to use a particular indicator whose range of pH for the color change falls in this region now if you just see here for phenolophthalein and methyl or phenolophthalein for okay for phenolophthalein the range of ph is for color change range of ph for color change if you can see from the pink color around 8 8.5 to 10 you can say 8.5 to 10 this is the range of pH of color change now for methyl orange indicator the range of pH is you can say from the orange color around 2 to 4.5 right 2 to 4.5 so now for the actually the at the equivalence point during the titration of the weak acid weak base solution change of pH is happening 6 to 7 but the phenolophthalein indicator works at this range 8.5 to 10 and methyl orange indicator works at this range 2 to 4.5 so both this region both this range of pH is outside this region right so that's why we cannot use this indicator or this indicator to titrate the weak acid weak base solution we have to use other indicator whose range of pH for color change falls in this region 6 to 7 got it okay sir yeah. okay so i think everything is clear now okay so next week we'll be solving uh, more questions like this and if you have any particular doubts or any particular topics you can ask questions Okay, so, so please yeah. share your YouTube oh, okay, link. YouTube link.